So if you've clicked on this video, you would know who Merc Music slash Eric is. A Call of Duty channel who at his peak was receiving 2 million views per video, to now unable to scratch even 100,000 views a video. But what caused this downfall to happen? But before we move on to that segment, what made Eric's channel so popular in the first place? Well, as Brain Food broke it down, it was his personality, editing, and crew. Now Eric's crew held many members, Merc Rampage, Andrew, She Knives, Omar, and many more. All these people had great chemistry with one another, ultimately making Eric's videos more engaging and entertaining. However, as of 2024, none of these people have been seen on Eric's channel. So why is that the case? Well, the downfall initially started in the year 2018. On January 30th, 2018, Eric uploaded a video titled Meet My Girlfriend Karina onto his channel. He explained to his audience how he had met a girl through Snapchat that he started e-dating. So I added this person back and then I got a message from her saying, hey, guess what? And obviously I replied back saying what? And then she said chicken butt and it was super corny, but it was interesting to me. For whatever reason, it was enough to get my attention at that point. I was intrigued and I kept messaging her. And it got to a point where we were just messaging each other back and forth and getting to know each other better. And as we were messaging, back and forth, I could tell that we were really clicking and I wanted to actually talk to this girl. Eric then explained how in the video he was going to fly out to Washington to see her as they both live in different states. Which is why when you're seeing this video on the 30th on a Tuesday, I'm going to be out in Washington meeting her for the first time. Words can't even describe how excited I am to actually be able to meet her and spend time with her. And without necessarily getting too specific, let's just say that I'm ready to commit to her and that she's my future. The next video Eric uploaded was titled The Future, where he essentially talked about the future of his life and channel. However, what caught everyone's attention was when he announced that he proposed to his girlfriend and that she had moved in with him. But if you don't follow me on Twitter or you just happened to miss yesterday's video, I actually proposed to her and she's now living here. But yeah, things are going extremely well. I'm actually really happy with how everything has been going. After this statement, people started commenting on how they disagreed with Eric's decision to marry her, as the two had only known each other for a couple months. Love is supposed to grow over time. Has an online relationship for two months, proposes. Honestly, Merc, I'm happy for you and she seems like a nice girl, but getting married two months into a relationship is insane. I understand that you have feelings for her and she's probably a great person, but you should take time to consider that marriage is a serious thing and sometimes it's not as easy as just getting a divorce and boom, it's over. Some channels even went as far as to make videos on Eric, such as the former YouTuber 8 Thoughts. Nevertheless, Eric began to upload videos with his girlfriend, however the videos were heavily disliked because a part of his audience either did not like this new content or Karina personally. Now two months after he had announced his relationship with Karina, Eric would upload a video titled Reacting to Toxic Comments, where he addressed the hate he and his girlfriend were receiving in videos. The whole reason I'm bringing this up in the first place is because some of the shit that I've been seeing in my comment section has been extremely hurtful and hateful and just downright wrong. Just because some of you guys don't like my fiance or you don't think that she's funny doesn't mean that you have to say some of the shit that you've been saying. I don't personally see the problem with doing videos with her every so often and I'm still doing solo videos and still doing videos with my friends. I don't feel like she's really being given a chance in the first place and that she's just kind of being shot down right from the start. Yeah, it's pretty unfair. Eric had even responded to channels making videos on the situation in Twitlongers, such as 8 Thoughts. The people that actually support me, love me, or care about me are Karina, my family, my friends, and the fans who aren't blindly believing what 8 Thoughts is saying. Do you really think he knows best that he somehow has a better grasp of our relationship than the two people actually in it? Of course not. This is just his way of exploiting and growing on YouTube, which is disgusting and upsetting. It's even more disappointing because he used to have an old channel where he made actual content based around his actual personality and gameplay, but now he's stooped to a level lower than dirt. Eight Thoughts, if you actually care, have a shred of respect, or want to show that you're the mature adult here, take down the videos you've made about us. You think it's funny to lie about other people in YouTube videos and profit and grow off of it, but you're hurting people that don't deserve it. I don't actually expect you to do it, but you never know. It's the least I can do for Karina since it's been affecting her the worst. Several months after this drama had ended, Eric announced in May that he was taking a break from YouTube. Mentally, physically, and creatively, I need this break. For quite some time now, I've given YouTube priority over a number of things in my life. I've turned down plans with friends, I've turned down plans with family. Over many years, I've sacrificed many hours to do YouTube instead of doing other things in my life. And to be honest, I'm kind of tired of YouTube taking control of my life. However, this was not the last of the drama. In 2020, two years after the controversy, Eric's audience started to question why his friends were no longer present in his videos. Well, in September 2020, several of Eric's ex-friends came out on Twitter explaining what had happened. 
the first being Merc Rampage. Even to this day, people are still asking where I am in Eric's videos. The fact of the matter is, a few weeks ago, Omar, Andrew and I had noticed that he and his girlfriend had unfollowed all of us and blocked slash unblocked to stop us from following them. This removal was done on all platforms, Xbox, PlayStation, Steam, Discord, even Origin on PC, making it difficult to reach out. I tried sending an email to the one I have, asking what the reason was and got no reply. It's a damn shame, helped and supported him personally and his channel for many, many years. It's the same with Andrew and Omar, if not more so. Oh well, we had fun. Don't read these tweets and be upset. Even though this has happened, I still wish nothing but prosperity for Eric. I grew up talking to him every day and he's the reason you all even know of my account. Anyway, Merc Music, I wish you the best in life and I hope your wedding is absolutely beautiful and everything you want it to be. The next person that came out on Twitter was Andrew. A few weeks and months went by and we were all now living in the era of a global pandemic. I had talked to Eric slash Karina in a little while and I opened up this Twitter account for the first time in ages to send them a DM in our private group chat. I wished them all well and told them we needed to catch up some time soon since we hadn't really talked, let alone played games in quite some time. That never happened though. A few weeks later I tried sending Eric a text as a hurricane was approaching Florida. I never got a reply from that text and kind of brushed it off and chalked it up to him being busy. Then like I said a few weeks later I noticed that they had unfollowed all of us and essentially cast out on their lives. I was stunned and upset. Andrew also stated that when Eric and Karina were planning their wedding, Eric had initially asked Andrew to be his best man, but later on, changed his mind and made Karina's brother his best man, which ended up hurting Andrew. Now the next person who also came out on Twitter was Ben, and by looking at his tweets, he was the angriest out of all of them. With all my friends making statements, I just wanted to speak my mind. I wasn't friends with Eric as long as Mike, Omar or Andrew, but I felt like we got along well for the most part. After he got engaged, he just became a different person. I hoped it was just a phase, we stopped talking after a while and eventually Yarm followed. The night Eric blocked me, Karina tweeted saying that we were trying to break up the friend group. That infuriated me, and I had tried to be supportive but when all this drama happened, I distanced myself. I later heard that the reason I was blocked was because I wasn't publicly supporting their relationship, which made me even angrier. So according to Eric and Karina, I had to defend them while things in my life were going to shit. I had enough at that point. Now after all these tweets came out, Eric never responded to them. However, Karina did on Twitter. I really thought some people were actually better than they portray themselves to be. But then they're out there really lying through their teeth and making some really false ass claims about my family and my life. Thanks. Friends. Look, I don't want any beef with people. Shit happens, but lying isn't okay. Making stuff up about who's best man or not isn't okay. My brother had a stroke last year and plans changed, okay? Nothing was done to hurt anybody intentionally. Now what Karina doesn't elaborate on is what Eric's friends actually lied about. She stated they made false claims about her family and life, even though that's not what they did. Karina stated that Andrew lied about who was going to be the best man at the wedding, but then went on to contradict herself in the same tweet by confirming that the best man did change from Andrew to Karina's brother. So from all the tweets I've read, what essentially happened was Eric and all of his friends grew apart and stopped talking, as each of their lives became busier. However, for some reason, Eric and Karina decided to remove and block all of them. And to this day, no one knows why. Although Ben did mention the reason he was blocked was apparently he did not publicly support the relationship, that doesn't make any sense to me, because why would they block their friends for not publicly supporting Eric and Karina's relationship two years after the drama? Maybe that was one of the reasons, and if that was one reason, why then that's beyond stupid. Why do your friends have to get involved in drama that has nothing to do with them? Anyway, after all of Eric's ex-friends came out on Twitter, Eric started to remove his videos with them on the channel. One series Eric had on his channel was called Shit Someone Says, which was a compilation of iconic quotes spoken by each of his friends. The two videos he ended up removing were videos of Merc Rampage and Andrew. Eric also started to retitle videos that included his ex-friends' names. One video on his second channel playing Mortal Kombat was titled Tina Farted On Me, later on being retitled to It Farted On Me. What I find funny about this is, in Eric's response video to the hate his girlfriend had received, he was angry about the fact people were referring to his girlfriend as a thing slash object. This person said, ew, the thing is back. It's obviously disrespectful and just rude, but it's not even creative in the slightest Like, I really don't get how the f it has that many thumbs up, it's just weird. However, he does the exact same thing to his ex-friends. Eric also went on to delete any donations that mentioned his ex-friends or the drama in live streams. So what caused the death of Merc Music's career? 
Well, there are several factors. One of the reasons I believe because his friends with whom he had great banter and chemistry in videos were no longer being featured. And to this day, we'll never know why. I mean, you could try asking Eric yourself, but he'll just delete your message. However, the main reason I believe his career has met its demise is because he has been uploading the same type of content for years. For example, Eric is a Call of Duty channel, and for the last few years the Call of Duty series has died, meaning no one cares about the games anymore and would prefer to watch something else on YouTube. Not only that, but Eric has stuck to the same video format since 2016. I mean, you can see in his thumbnails, he still uses the same thumbnail style and format from several years ago. He even makes videos on old COD games, such as Advanced Warfare, a game that came out a decade ago now. And we all know on YouTube, your content must change and adapt to current times, or it will become old and stale. 